thank you very much for staying with Facing the Nation. Of course, we're still talking governance and so on in AP and UAFC's business. And by extension, that is Guyana's big business because you elected uh, this government to serve you and you know, continue to uh, promote development and so on. I have two young persons on the program today. One of them is returning. Um, even though you go ladies before gents, I'm going to introduce the gent first because this is his first time on the program and you see he still, he hasn't lost his baby features, his mother's features as we call it. His name is Jamal Bagot and he is chairman of the Better Hope Triumph, Better for Wattin Triumph uh, NDC. Um, welcome to Facing the Nation. It's a pleasure having you. And congratulations because I am going to go out on a limb here and assume you are the youngest chairman ever for that because you're, I, I'm Correct. told you're very young. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, right. for having me here. It's a pleasure. Great, great. To be here this afternoon. So good. And of course, everyone, you know, Shanika. She's been here before. <laughs> and you're out there too, Shanika Haynes. Welcome back. Uh, of course, Thank APN, you. UAFC, Youth, um, Government Support, Government Worker all of the positive things that you can attach to her name. Welcome back to Facing the Nation, ma'am. Thank you. I'm happy right. to be here again. Great. I am happy to be having this conversation, of course, at a time when, you know, people are still adjusting to so many changes happening in the political and governmental environment, and it's always good to hear um, from young persons. I, I want to start with you, Jamal. Talk about your experience of chairman of that NDC, and even talk about some of the things in the community, some of the development you, developments you as a young person would have seen from 2015 to now in that community specifically. Okay, Malaika. Well, um, first, before I answer your question, let mm -hmm. me go back to a few years ago, 2016, when I would have decided to contest the local government election mm -hmm. as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, I had lost all confidence in the um, the government, the previous administration. Mm -hmm. um, APNU had uh, just uh, won the election at that time. They mm -hmm. won in 20, 2015, mm -hmm. and the local government election uh, was held in 2016. Yes. So I had decided at that point to you know run as an independent candidate and now run under any uh, political mm -hmm. party. Which is good. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I did, and <laughs> fortunately I won my constituency mm -hmm. as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. And uh, surprisingly, um, to my surprise, uh, after I would have won the election, I would have gotten a paramount of support from the current administration. Mm -hmm. um, the current administration, they had contested the elections. They had um, 16, sorry, 12 seats on the council. Mm -hmm. um, my one and the rest was PPP. Our council is uh, 18 seats. Okay. So surprisingly, I had gotten the support from the government, even though I didn't run under the yes, government. Yes, viewers, he's stressing that even yes. though he didn't run under the government, he ran I as got, an I independent. I got the support. Yes. Um, I was elected the chairman of the finance committee. And then uh, fast tracking back to 2018, last year, when we had the local government elections, I was approached by um, Ms. Allen, Genevieve Allen, regional chairperson, mm -hmm. and some other influential persons in the government who had, you know, asked me to come on board, come under their arm, and run um, for the local government election under APNU. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, some of my conditions were you know, if I'm going to run on the APNU, I would like to choose my own slate. I want to choose my own team. I'm not Lovely. going to be um, taking Very directives from yeah. from anyone. So, and surprisingly, again, they agreed to it. You know, they gave me the opportunity to be the leader of the list for the local authority of BV Triumph. They given me they gave me the opportunity to select the councillors from the PR list mm -hmm. um, from our list of um, contestants. I was given the opportunity to do all of that. Um, uh, and since the um, since election to now, I can say that this government has been supporting uh, our NDC as they were over the years. Mm -hmm. um, for ex like, for example, um, Minister Ronald Balkan, mm -hmm. he is one of my biggest supporters. Um, the Ministry of Communities, they have recently given us a grant of seven, $7.7 million um, to expand on our community ground. Um, during our election campaign, 
that was one of the, the, the most complaints from the youths in the area, you know, they don't have any recreational facilities in the area. And fortunately, um, uh, the Ministry of Communities, they stepped in and they assisted us by giving us a grant. They, as a matter of fact, they gave four communities this grant, um, Better for Acton, um, I think Buxton, Pleasance, mm -hmm. and Hans Grove, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, the, those four communities were given the 7.7 .7 million grant. Um, our um, decision on how we were going to spend that grant was to build a basketball court. Mm -hmm. The basketball court is currently under construction. Um, we're going to build a basketball court fully equipped with solar lighting so uh, the youths in the area, they can play all night. If and, you're con and you're contributing to, to the yes. President's Green Initiative and yes. the Green Economy. Right. Greg, it's great to hear, to hear so much from you. And I always love when uh, a young person can come and not, not talk and just say, okay, I'm a supporter of this government. You can tell me why. You spoke about your yes. experiences and so on, and I know that will propel you into further greatness. And, and uh, viewers watching will be looking and, and, and hearing, um, wanting to hear much more from you eventually but Shanika I want to pull you into the conversation now because and I, I want to talk to you regarding what you know uh, e some of the things that would have happened from uh, 20 from uh, December to now <laughs> last December to now how do you feel this has affected youth affected support and so on because I know you're out there on the ground doing a lot of work too um I would say it would have had a positive influence okay. on the way we move forward ah. because when you I I prior to and I was here before we had the 2018 election mm -hmm. um, local government mm -hmm. election and I would have stressed about the importance of going out to these elections and what they mean and even talking about the referendum that the opposition was looking to have in these elections mm -hmm. which at this point we all see why mm -hmm. but I think a lot of persons during that time still did not get the message of how important it was and because of the great things that are happening in this country currently in terms of how our economy is moving despite some people maybe saying oh it's not moving I mean the numbers show differently and we'll mm -hmm. stick to those okay. and <laughs> they they have this they're moving viciously to ha take part in what is about to happen and what Greatness. has begun to happen in this country. And that's one of the reasons I was so adamant that we must do something when it comes to the local government election. Yes. Then we had the 21st of December happening. And I think for a lot of Guyanese, it was a wake up call, not just the government, but for Guyanese in general. I remember I was in Burby, um, coincidentally, when the incident happened.